Welcome to the Word of Faith, coming to you from PBC Northgate, happening at Tavira Loaka. We are glad you are tuned in. The Word of God has life, has breath, has nutrition for our souls. It's my prayer that it be a blessing to you, to you today. As we read scripture, meditate together and pray. My scripture is Genesis chapter 18, and also a portion of Genesis chapter 19. The Bible says, the Lord said to Abram, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I'll spare the whole place for their sake. I'll fast forward that story in verse 32. Abraham is pushing down the number. He said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned home. In chapter 19, the Bible says, early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had, uh, uh, he had uh, the place where he had uh, been with the Lord. He looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah, towards the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land, uh, like smoke from a furnace. God destroyed the cities uh, of Sodom and Gomorrah. He rained brimstone and a fire upon them and completely overturned them. He overthrew them uh, and only Lot escaped with his two daughters. This is the word of the Lord. We are meditating on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, Lot was in Sodom because he had chosen uh, to live near the city where he had found a green pasture for his animals in a civilization, in a liver. He was happy to leave his uncle, um, Abram, up the mountains of Mamre, uh, in the place now called Hebron. And uh, if you read scripture, you'll find that Abraham actually continued in discipleship even after Lot had left, and he trained many people in his household. But uh, for Lot, is a, is a story of degradation. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah were wicked, and uh, Lot joined them in their wickedness. So much that even though Abraham had been praying and interceding for the city, uh, that uh, even 50 be found, even 40, even 35, even 20, even 10 could not be found. Bible says that only four people, Lot, his wife, and their two daughters were able to escape from Sodom. And the wife uh, did not have conviction because she didn't obey God. The Bible had said, that if you look back, it's not going to go well with you. She looked back and uh, turned into a pillar of salt. Luke 17, 32 is a testimony to that uh, story. It says that, uh, remember Lot's wife. She didn't believe God, turned into a pillar of salt. Not 10 could be found. And uh, when we talk about this city that was very prosperous, we see that uh, Abraham, or Abraham at that time, was a friend of God. In verse 17, God is saying, shall I fail to tell my friend? Genesis 18, 17, shall I fail to tell my friend about what I'm going to do for Sodom and Gomorrah? I'm going to check whether the wickedness is as much as is mentioned, and uh, if so, I'll take action against them. And uh, Abraham, you know, petitioned God. He talked about uh, doing justice, doing the right thing, uh, the promise, of salvation, and he really pleaded, God, don't destroy the wicked with the righteous. And God uh, heeded to the prayer uh, of, of, of Abram, and he said, I'll not destroy even the city if only 10 people there are righteous. But we see that uh, even though he went from 50 to 10, verses 24 and to, uh, to the 33, only three people were able to escape uh, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 19, verse 30. And the city was visited with brimstone and with fire. Sulfur rained down. The people died. The city, you know, big holes. It was like never before. I want to warn you that uh, God is a loving God, but also a just God. What had happened to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were doing as their bodies desired. They were not spiritual at all. When the three visitors who were angels came to the city, they asked that these men be brought out uh, so that they could uh, have sex with them. They were homosexuals 
and they were rapists. They were terrible. Their morals had degraded to a level which is decadent. And you know, it's so easy for us to laugh at them and say they were wicked. But also, we need to watch our walk and our, our talk very carefully so that we don't degrade. Degradation is very easy because you're going downstream. Gravity is helping you. It's very easy to have, just stay in neutral and fall into sin because it's natural to the body. The Bible says in Romans 7, the good I want to do, I don't do. I find this law at work in the bodies, in the members of my body. They want to do bad. In Galatians, he says that the, the evils of the body are natural. So you have to raise up a standard. Like Abraham had raised up a standard of obedience, of loving God, and a standard of intercession for his friends. My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that uh, God is just and faithful. So if he has say he'll punish the wicked, sure enough, God will punish the wicked. He's looking for that critical mass around you, the people you influence, the marketplace, the mama boga you visit, the kiosk where you buy your milk. Have you spoken to them about the love of Christ? Sodom and Gomorrah could be right by our doorsteps unless we wear the heart of Abraham who moved intercession and who cried out and said, even if there are only 10, the Lord will spare the city. I don't know what number you are, you are discipling currently, but I pray you'll go past 10. 10 seems to be the minimum threshold. I pray that you'll get to 12. 12 people you can account for and say, these ones in my generation, I'll follow them and they'll never perish because I'm praying. This is my prayer, that become a man of influence become a man of um, uh, intercession, become a man of discipleship. Bring people to the maturity in the Lord, and the Lord will bless you big time. Learn from the lesson of Sodom and Gomorrah. Learn from the lesson of Lord's wife, and the Lord will bless you big time to the glory of his name. Thank you for tuning in, and may the Lord bless you as you meditate on this story, as you read Genesis chapter 18 and Genesis chapter 19, and see the faithfulness of our God, and we pray this in Jesus' name. God bless you.